guests and graduands. Welcome to this Birmingham City University Award Ceremony. We'll be opening proceedings in the next few minutes. Can I first make some important announcements and requests to ensure everyone can fully enjoy the occasion? First of all, a safety notification. We're not expecting any testing of the fire alarm or any other disruption today, but if the alarm does sound or there is an emergency, you'll be given directions by the nearest door steward so that you can proceed quickly and safely to the nearest emergency exit. Please turn all mobile phones to silent or switch them off completely. We welcome the taking of photos and video, but if you're doing so, please do not stand or block the view of others in the audience. We have more than 350 students graduating today, and each one who crosses the stage is really important to us. Please do clap and cheer as loudly as you wish as your graduand crosses the stage, and allow others to do so without distraction when their graduand is crossing. The ceremony is expected to last approximately an hour. In our experience, small children can become restless during proceedings and sometimes even a little noisy. If your child does become unsettled, can we please ask you to move quietly out of the hall in order that they do not distract other guests and graduates from their enjoyment. We have a comfortable viewing room where you can still watch the proceedings and tend to your child. Your nearest door steward will be able to direct you. Graduates, this bit is important for you. You've been seated carefully and in a particular order to ensure that every person crosses the stage in the correct sequence. Please do stay in your assigned seat and when you're asked to come out of your row and move round to the corridor ready to cross the stage, please do not move out of your assigned order. It is absolutely essential that you're sitting in the seat indicated on your student registration card. So if you've moved seats for any reason, please move back to your correct seat now. Okay, so our graduation ceremonies are formal occasions and they follow a traditional format. They begin with a fanfare, following which the academic procession and the chancellor's procession will enter the hall. At the end of the ceremony, once the pro-chancellor closes proceedings, could I please ask graduates to stand once again and for guests to remain in your seats until the procession has exited the hall, after which you'll be able to leave and join your party to celebrate, with your, graduates, to celebrate your graduates' achievements. When leaving the auditorium, we encourage friends and family to remain on the current level that you're seated on in the Symphony Hall foyer area, and for graduates to reunite with family in that area, please. Um, there will be live music, and there are refreshments, ice cream, etc., for you to enjoy in that, in that location. Okay, so we're about to begin. Can I ask everybody to please stand as the processions enter the hall?
Well, good morning. It's my pleasure to declare this congregation open, and I invite you please to take your seats and make yourselves comfortable on this gloriously warm day. It's my pleasant duty to preside over this ceremony as Pro-Chancellor of the University and I'm delighted to be part of such a wonderful celebration of our students' achievements in the presence of families and friends. Will you please now show a warm welcome to our Vice-Chancellor, Professor Philip Plowden, as I call upon him to give the opening address. Pro-Chancellor, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, and of course, all of you who are graduating today. I am delighted to welcome you all to Birmingham City University's graduation ceremony, and all the more pleased because this week of ceremonies is the first that we've been able to hold in person since January 2020. So, a very warm welcome here to the magnificent Symphony Hall in the heart of Birmingham. We're very proud to see this city as our city and us as the university for Birmingham. Graduation is, of course, always a real pleasure because it's such a, a special day. It's a day for celebration for you, the graduates, for our university community who are all around me, and for all of your friends and your family and your supporters who come to join us today. But I have to say, even by the standards of graduations, this does feel particularly special. Um, after the last two years, these ceremonies mark a return to being able to celebrate your achievements in person. I know that those of you who are graduating this summer have had one of the more unusual student journeys that any of us would have experienced. But we're here now, and we're in a position to be able to give you the celebration that you deserve. And I'm delighted that over the next month or more, we will do what we always promised, and we will give each and every student who has graduated from BCU over the past couple of years, the opportunity to participate and to celebrate without restrictions and without compromise. So graduates, this is absolutely your day. But I think this year above all, and given everything that we have been through, we absolutely need to start by acknowledging all of those who have supported you during the journey that's brought you here today. And around me are some of the staff who have supported you in your learning and who I know are as proud of your achievement as you and your families are. And absolutely, all around us here in the hall are your families, your friends, and your supporters. The people, of course, who have been particularly important in being there for you when times were tough. So graduates, I'm going to suggest that we start by saying a huge thank you to all of them. <laughs> Often in these graduation speeches, I talk about change and the fact that you are going to see such significant change in the world around you and the way in which being a graduate equips you to deal with that change. But of course, I need to start by acknowledging that you've already lived through one of the most marked changes, change on a grand scale that any of us have ever seen, change which has impacted on every aspect of all of our lives. And you, our graduates, and the rest of our BCU student community know this better than most. But I hope that notwithstanding that challenge, your time at BCU has been memorable for all of the right reasons as well. The friendships 
that you have made, the communities that you have been part of, as well, of course, as the learning and the achievement that we celebrate today. And I hope that you'll be able to, in future to reflect on not just your achievement, but the challenges that you have overcome in order to be here today. The determination and the adaptability that you have already shown. Because that is going to stand you in very good stead in your future lives. Now, during the period of your studies, the university has, of course, continued to grow and to develop. Whether the redevelopment of the skills hubs down at City South or, of course, the magnificent redevelopment of the Belmont Works building up on our city centre campus, which will be a future home for part of your faculty. And it's great to be able to bring the Belmont Works building back into use because it's such a symbol of the way in which this university is integrated into the fabric of our city and has been for almost 180 years. And in the city all around us, there's always in Birmingham a sense of real buzz and excitement because we're one of the youngest cities in Europe and we have one of the most diverse groups of different communities bringing all sorts of different cultural endeavours together. And the city around us has continued to change. The hall in which you are sitting has undergone a remarkable facelift, complementing the new centenary square outside and all of the developments around Paradise Circus. And every week brings announcements of new businesses coming into the city, new cultural development, new film studios, new production facilities, and of course, the continuing expansion of the region's thriving digital industries. But above all at the moment, there's a sense of growing excitement as we all prepare for the Commonwealth Games, just a couple of weeks away now. And it's a wonderful time to be here in Birmingham, and I'm sure that many of you in this hall will be looking forward to spectating or volunteering or working at the Games. But the Games also show the way in which, as a university, we and our graduates are deeply embedded in the city around us. We've already seen the costume design students design all the costumes for the opening event for the Birmingham 2022 Festival. And our jewellery students up in our unique school of jewellery have continued that long heritage of medal making right here in the city by designing the medals with which the athletes will be presented on the podium at the Games. And these are links that reinforce our mission as the university for Birmingham and they underline the rich, creative heritage that you are also part of. And the last couple of years emphasise why what happens in universities is of importance to us all. The role of research, knowledge creation, the development of new understandings and new practices. And nothing could bring this more vividly to life than the speed at which the new vaccines were developed to help moderate the impact of the recent pandemic. Knowledge has never been more important, and that's something that each of you who are graduating provides evidence of as you celebrate today. And that's why it's so important that we have ceremonies like this, that we're able to meet in person because graduates are important. And in every society, they, you, are important. Graduates live longer. Apparently, they drink less. Graduates are more productive. They contribute more to society around them. They're more likely to volunteer, to vote, and to lead. They have better health. But above all, above all, Graduates are better placed to deal with change. And I hope many of you, all of you, lead long, long lives. But the implication of that is that during your lives, you will face change not once, 
but many, many times. You'll probably not have one career, but many careers. And you'll often need to master new skills, new knowledge, and to learn afresh. And that's why being a graduate is so important. You have skills that equip you to learn. You have the habits of learning. And today, today we're not just celebrating what you have achieved, impressive though that is. What we are also celebrating is what you will achieve in your futures. Now, our history as a university dates all the way back to 1843, when we were originally founded as the Birmingham Government School of Design. And we have changed often and often during the last 180 years. But we've stayed true to that founding purpose. And that purpose was simple. Learning that makes a difference in the world. In ensuring that our graduates all around the world make a difference in their societies. So my challenge to you is simple. Today is a day to celebrate your personal achievement. It's a day to celebrate your personal transformation. But do see it also as part of a broader commitment, a commitment to transforming the world all around you. You've all seen the IMBCU images, whether here around this building or down on our campuses. And you, our students, came up with that. It didn't come from us, it came from you. And when we talked to students and said, what does IMBCU mean? They said it was about pride. They said it was about confidence. But above all, they said it was about belonging. It was about that powerful sense of belonging to an extraordinary community. You'll always be part of our community. You'll always be part of our alumni body. But look, that's enough from me. Today is absolutely your day, and we're delighted that we can be here to celebrate with you. Today is the day when you get to celebrate achieving what you set out to do a long, long time ago. And it is a great achievement, and I congratulate you all. Well done. I'm now delighted to call upon the Pro Vice Chancellor and Executive Dean of the Faculty of Computing, Engineering and the Built Environment, Professor Hanifa Shah, to commence the presentation of award holders and on the Pro Chancellor to receive the students. Pro Chancellor, as Pro Vice Chancellor and Executive Dean, I present students from the Faculty of Computing, Engineering and the Built Environment who have qualified for the award of degrees, diplomas and certificates. I commence by presenting candidates for the award of research degree. For the award of Doctor of Philosophy, for a thesis entitled The Dynamic Relationship Between UK Housing Finance, House Prices and Their Interplay with Macroeconomic Indicators, I present Dr Bismarck Aha. For the award of Doctor of Philosophy for a thesis entitled Improving the Delivery of the Landscape Scale in Policy and Practice Using an Applied Delphi Framework, I present Dr. Louis James Durant. <laughs> for the award of Doctor of Philosophy for a thesis entitled Cyber-Physical Attack Detection in IoT-enabled water distribution systems, a data intelligence and decentralized approach, I present Dr. Haytham Mahmood.
for the award of Doctor of Philosophy for a thesis entitled Intelligent Edge Cloud Framework for Water Quality Monitoring in IoT-Enabled Water Distribution Networks, I present Dr. Issa Shara. <laughs> for the award of Doctor of Philosophy for a thesis entitled Computer-Aided Design and Analysis of a Novel Quadrota UAV with an interchangeable structure, I present Dr. Moad Idrisi. <laughs> for the award of Doctor of Philosophy for a thesis entitled Development of a Semantic Knowledge Modeling Approach for Evaluating Offsite Manufacturing Production Processes, I present Dr. Kudirat Alabisi Ayinla. I now invite Associate Professor Dr. Poonam Olak to the lectern to present award holders from the School of Engineering and the Built Environment. Master of Science in Automotive Engineering, Abhishek Chauhan. <laughs> Damanpreet Singh Ruprai. <laughs> Naman Sharma. Postgraduate Certificate in Automotive Engineering, Samuel Economian. Master of Science in Building Surveying with Facilities Management, James Wood. Master of Science in Construction Project Management with Professional Placement, Hemil Krishnagant Modi. Master of Science in Construction Project Management, Elizabeth Adiola. <laughs> Munichismo Gift Agu. <laughs> Eddie Duran Agubalaje. Naga Venkata Shiva Krishna Deja Avireni. Shivani Balam. Asima Das. Bhagya Sailada. Foster Harris. Thank you. Adarsh Sanas. Milad Mohtadi. Balram Lamichane. Sri Raksmi, Kanji Ramabil, Sasi. <laughs> Master of Science in Construction Project Management, Amir Nasiri. <laughs> Vamsi Isaac Paruvu. Ashoka Vassal. <laughs> a 
Lauren Sakia. Thank you. Mohammed Akib Sandisma. Thank you. Vikneswaran Tille Laipam. Hasina Ziad. Postgraduate Diploma in Construction Project Management, Nidhi Patel. <laughs> Postgraduate Certificate in Construction Project Management, Harsha Reddy Suredi. <laughs> Master of Science in International Logistics and Supply Chain Management, Latifa Al Mamari. Ali Hassan. <laughs> Anjana Kotandaram. <laughs> David Osei Adu. <laughs> Master of Science in Logistics and Supply Chain Management with Professional Placement, Yatunde Akinlabi. Raiz Gal Gul Jadun. <laughs> Master of Science in Logistics and Supply Chain Management, Mark Akwu Wagubu. <laughs> Shoaib Anwar. <laughs> Shubham Chaparia. Mariama Jabi. <laughs> Varun Garival. <laughs> Sansimola Ilesanami. <laughs> Dharmanajan Nanundal. <laughs> Minesh Patel. Dabal Sambare. <laughs> and Geeta Sebastian. <laughs> Abhishek Sharma. <laughs> Master of Science in Logistics and Supply Chain Management, Tannapal Asingam Bala Murali. Master of Science in Mechanical Engineering, Shazeb Ashik Ali. <laughs> Akintomiwa Ishola. <laughs> Danish Kayani. <laughs> Parth Patel. Master of Science in Project Management with Professional Placement, Philip Agbayeke. <laughs> Anil Gangulu. <laughs> Martin Obita. <laughs> Master of Science in Project Management, Olumid Adulogu. Naga Kumar Reddipalli. <laughs> Adetoro Agbaje. <laughs> Theophilus Alabi. <laughs> Master of Science in Project Management with Professional Placement, Ashvita Asaleti.
Master of Science in Project Management of FIFA Ayub. <laughs> Leela Baday. <laughs> Bituja Chilka. <laughs> Mohammed Shainayaz Chowdhury. Justice Ebay. <laughs> Amandeep Kaur. <laughs> Jaspreet Kaur. <laughs> Olufun Milayo Jeje. Tiffany Kanko. <laughs> Pavian Aksa. <laughs> Anjali Kanojia. <laughs> Muhammad Azar Kanyat. Salim Shahzad Khan. <laughs> Abib Mustafa. <laughs> Bakas Hussein. <laughs> Zarina Nasirinia. <laughs> Tien Nagayan. Atua Obeyed. <laughs> Hemanula Ogabene. <laughs> Berlinale Unifico. <laughs> Olubiseo Oniroko. Sabahat Kayam. <laughs> Anantapad Manabhan Rajan. <laughs> Idarain Udoma Udofa. <laughs> Esther Umukoro. Margot Vallon. <laughs> Vivian Vieira dos Santos Pereira. <laughs> Mori Yogamurti. <laughs> Postgraduate Certificate in Project Management, Mohamed Aziz. Master of Science in Project Management, Vivekananda Prem Kumar. <laughs> Master of Science in Quantity Surveying, Thomas Hemmings. <laughs> Master of Science in Quantity Surveying, Lan Kalugag, Fernando. Master of Science in Real Estate Management, Amir Latif. <laughs> Bachelor of Engineering with Honours in Automotive Engineering, Jack Howard. <laughs> William Gabb. <laughs> Elliot Haxby. Gary Wintersgill. <laughs> Bachelor of Engineering with Honours in Civil Engineering, Kalu Ajar. <laughs> Dr. 
Bello Aminu Bello Masiri. Obed Apia. Ricardo Blake. Kyle Conlon. Dorenz Custodio. Adrian Dembiki. Mohamed Jamal Mohamed Diab. Sean Doyle. Usman Farouk. Faison Hussein. Bachelor of Engineering with Honours in Civil Engineering, Mohsin Hussain. <laughs> Obina Augustine Obedozi Ihjiofor. <laughs> Sachin Kalyan. <laughs> Mohammed Khan. Shah Jahan Matin. <laughs> Kay Pocock. <laughs> Alexander Dushawoska. <laughs> Gabriella Sack. Abu Baker Sahabi. <laughs> Tapiwa Sampson. <laughs> Fanuel Tekalib. <laughs> Bachelor of Engineering with Honours in Civil Engineering, Lin Ong. Mo U. <laughs> Bachelor of Engineering with Honours in Electronic Engineering, Ahmed Al Athamina. <laughs> Lu. <laughs> Luca Alushi. Andrew Barnett. <laughs> Hamid Zafar Faroz. <laughs> Kieran Hardy. <laughs> Harry Hudson. <laughs> Michael. Kendrew Jones. <laughs> Joshua Lambden. <laughs> Hamza Mazurai. <laughs> Luan Than Nagayan. Kevin Shah. <laughs> Diran Salanki. <laughs> Alex Walton. <laughs> Otis Weigang.
Bachelor of Engineering with honors in Manufacturing Engineering, Zayma Lee. <laughs> Bryn Guy. <laughs> Thomas Herriot. <laughs> Douglas Manley. Andrew O'Connor. <laughs> Edward Quant. <laughs> Muslim Samuel. <laughs> Riddick Sharma. Nicholas Thomas. <laughs> Robert Turner. <laughs> Connor Wiestel. <laughs> ben Wines. Craig Yarnell. <laughs> Bachelor of Engineering with Honours in Mechanical Engineering, Solomon Adams. <laughs> Matthew Andrews. <laughs> Mihai Lernert Antonacci. Ben Arblaster. <laughs> Troy Armstrong. <laughs> Tyrone Bailey. <laughs> Mohamed Chamok. Keenan Cooper. Aaron Crofts. William Croson. Rizik Kirabo. Jane Kunal. <laughs> Tawona Maswira. <laughs> Moses Mola. <laughs> Abbas Mohammed. Bachelor of Engineering with Honours in Mechanical Engineering, Marta Muka Muraka. <laughs> Abdul Rahim. <laughs> Yannick Raymond. Said. Majid Sharifiju. Lewis Sherwood. Aaron Sidhu. Rachel Simpson. <laughs> Samuel Squire. <laughs> Lee.
Zia Tanznen. Adam Turney. Scott Wilkerson. Bachelor of Engineering in Mechanical Engineering, Vishnu Taylor. <laughs> Master of Science in Automotive Engineering, Mohammed Fouridouz Zaman Manzuma. <laughs> Master of Science in Project Management with Professional Placement, Jasleen Call. Master of Science in Logistics and Supply Chain Management, Mohamed Usman. <laughs> Master of Science in Project Management, Sujeta Bala. <laughs> Isaiah Olaniran. Master of Science in Construction Project Management, Mohamed Arham. <laughs> this completes the first presentation of awards to graduates from the School of Engineering and the Built Environment. This completes the first presentation of graduates from the Faculty of Computing, Engineering and the Built Environment. I now invite the Vice-Chancellor to introduce the recipient of the honorary award of Doctor of the University. We are this morning delighted to be conferring the award of Doctor of the University upon Anthony McCourt. And I now call upon the University Orator to give the citation. Pro-Chancellor, Vice-Chancellor, distinguished guests, colleagues, and graduands. Today we confer the degree of Honorary Doctor of Birmingham City University honoris causa on Anthony McCourt. Ladies and gentlemen, if you'd taken a stroll down to the east side of Birmingham about 30 years ago, you would have been greeted by a proverbial post-industrial wasteland, a place where, in the memorable words of a former member of our governing body, you wouldn't want to venture without a machine gun. Now, the transformation is truly remarkable. A new university campus, a park, places to eat and drink inside and out, a museum, even a concert hall. But in a few years, that landscape will change still more dramatically. Never mind the HS2 terminus, the new tram stop where the trams will actually work or the new urban artwork in the new plaza towering over us all will be number one east side a 160 million pound project whose 51 stories will announce to visitors and everyone else that birmingham is quite literally on the way up and number one east side is the dream child of court collaboration the company founded in 2010 by our guest of honor today, Anthony McCourt. By background, he is a Northern Irishman and a lawyer, a graduate of the University of Birmingham, where he enrolled in 2001. Along with his LLB, he gained the annual prize for the student who had made an outstanding contribution to the life of the university. He then joined the great Birmingham firm of Rag & Co as a trainee solicitor, qualifying in law for commercial development. Numerous projects followed with the international law partnership of Gowlings from Birmingham to Q8, and a new future beckoned. He joined in the development of the iconic Cube building and overcoming complex technical and financial hurdles subsequently led on its conversion to a mixed use scheme. Now the Cube is a space where you can live, stay, park, exercise, have tea, have dinner, and observe Birmingham's changing cityscape firsthand. Partly for his work on that project, Anthony became celebrated, not just for his considerable commercial nous, 
but for that greatest of all attributes, his youth. In 2008, he was the youngest ever winner of the Birmingham Young Professional Award. In 2011, he was named among the Midlands leading 42 entrepreneurs under the age of 42. And as chair of the city's Enterprise Academy, which he founded in 2009, he was the youngest chair of such an organization in the UK. Now, for someone of such commercial nous and such youth, it was a natural move to set up his own company while still in his 20s. Court Collaboration has a fine track record in complex real estate investment and development with around 6,000 apartments to its name across the Midlands and the north of England. With the new Stoneyard development in Digbeth, there will be 995 more. From 2026, this £240 million project will help revitalize our own neighboring quarter. There'll be a new shopping boulevard in the midst of seven new blocks, one of which will be little brother to one east side, a mere 30-story tower with views over all Birmingham's architectural history. Ladies and gentlemen, when you think about it, there is something so very brummy about a man who came from across the sea to bring talent and energy to this city whose motto is forwards. When they build and think big, cities flourish. When they cease to imagine the future, they fall into inertia and decay. So as you walk round this relentlessly developing city of ours, think about the human endeavor, the ingenuity, the multiple kinds of expertise that have gone into its making. And if you walk again down to East Side, imagine its own future and the shining example set to all our students today by Anthony McCourt, yet another youthful, determined incomer who in making Birmingham his home has changed it for the better. So pro-chancellor, vice-chancellor, distinguished guests, colleagues, graduands, it gives me great pleasure to invite the vice-chancellor to confer the degree of honorary doctor of Birmingham City University honoris causa on Anthony McCourt. So ladies and gentlemen, as Vice-Chancellor, I exercise the authority of the University's Academic Board and I'm delighted to confer the award of Doctor of the University Honoris Causa on Anthony McCourt. And I invite you, Pro-Chancellor, to present the commemorative medal. That completes the conferment of the award of Doctor of the University Honoris Causa, and I'm delighted now to invite Anthony to address the congregation. Pro-Chancellor, Vice-Chancellor, distinguished guests, I am delighted to have a few minutes of your time this morning on what is a life-changing moment for all of you in this hall today. Whether it's a graduate leaving university and going into a place of work, or into the job market, or to start a business, or travel, or purely to consider next steps, no one is prouder of you than your, the university that has welcomed you, the city that has adopted you, and the alumni like me that welcome you into the fold. You have graduated from a world-class university, from a school and faculty that is pioneering in engineering and the built environment. You have all that you need in your head and your heart to throw yourself into any opportunity, venture, job, business or adventure. You are collecting much more than a degree classification today. You are celebrating just how resilient each of you have become. There are few honours that can match being given an honorary doctorate from BCU in my own city, which has become my own special home for me in the last 21 years. I arrived at Birmingham Airport from the north of Ireland in 2001 with two bags under my arm as a fresher and as a stranger to this city of a million people. Now, 21 years later, I am proud of being a migrant to this place and helping in our own small way, build its city core 
into a 21st century global city with amazing homes and skyscrapers, we hope the first of many, and attracting some billion pounds, one billion pounds of investment into this great city for its economy, its citizens and its jobs market. But believe me, if I can do it, then anyone can. I had twists and turns along the way. It's always a squiggle and never a straight gradient line. I feel the 11 plus, but I luckily went to a great and interested local comprehensive school and have loving and committed parents that seemed to make me realize all the twists and turns were part of and necessary for growth. It was sage advice that has and will last me beyond today. My fellow graduates, you're entering into a world tougher and more challenging than I did when I graduated. Economically, things happen quicker and without notice. In the jobs market, sectors are disappearing and being created at an astonishing rate. But the speed of flux and change is your opportunity if you grasp it. Don't fret or fear it. Welcome and embrace it. But it comes with some discomfort, as all good things do initially. And discomfort, friends, is such an interesting concept. In a world of Instagram and influencers, we are pushed hard to find a life free of discomfort, which looks good and feels amazing. And it always seems that others have it easier. But I argue for another, more difficult and challenging road to conquer. And we all know social media is far from reality, it just isn't true. I believe strongly there is a growth and lesson in success through struggle. I'm lucky enough to travel to Bali and Indonesia at least three or four times a year and have done for over a decade. A little tropical island in the Indian Ocean, it is my home from home. And there's a brilliant lobster fishing trade there. And last time I was in Bali, I decided to join a group of local fishermen and went fishing. But I got asked the question, how do lobsters grow? You see, lobsters are soft animals living in a rigid shell. That rigid shell does not expand. So how does the lobster actually grow? And the answer intrigued me. The fisherman said, as the lobster grows, the, sh the shell becomes very confining and the lobster feels itself under pressure and uncomfortable. So it goes under a rock in the sea to protect itself from predatory fish, casts off its shell and produces a new one. Eventually, that shell becomes very uncomfortable and the lobster repeats the process numerous times. The fisherman smiled and he said to me, the sign for the lobster to grow is when it feels discomfort. You see, even in our natural world, Mother Nature has made the feeling of being uncomfortable as the call sign to grow. That's never truer than it is today. Push your boundaries and stand outside your comfort zone as often as possible. You'll be rewarded by growing, developing, and conquering whatever you choose to do. To any graduate in this hall today that has found this experience particularly tough, I salute you. Maybe home life has been hard or complex. Maybe money is a constant struggle and battle. Perhaps you didn't always have the support group around you to see university through easily. Maybe you're a carer or have lost one or both parents. Or maybe you work several jobs alongside your studies to help your family. Or maybe you've suffered a loss during the last three years. Or even had real moments of self-doubt and nearly talked yourself off the playing field. To those individuals, particularly who recognize any of those hardships, my heart sings for you today. You have achieved so much more than a brilliant degree. You have moved decades into the university of life and have a resilience and strength that will make any further challenge seem easier and a challenge to grow your shell. Please take a moment to remind yourself just how far you've come today. Again, 
Thank you for the opportunity to share this special day with you. Always remember you have more skills, perseverance and resilience inside each of you than you could ever dream possible. It takes a deep self-belief and attitude to find it. And I hope that journey of discovery today starts for each of you. Of course, above all else, it's our human interactions that count for most in the end. I leave you with a very apt and telling quote from a great business investor, friend, and mentor of mine, Sir Tony Gallagher, who always reminds me, we make a living by what we get, but we make a life by what we give. Thank you, Pro Chancellor, for the honor of becoming a doctor of this fine university, and I wish each and every student graduating today the very best of luck in whatever you do next. Thank you. I now invite Professor Hanifa Shah to continue the presentation of award holders from the faculty. I invite Emma Love to the lectern to present award holders from the School of Engineering and the Built Environment. Bachelor of Science with Honours in Architectural Technology, Mohammed Al Awad. <laughs> Joel Atkins. <laughs> Shema Bemale. <laughs> Emily Farr. Mohammed Ibrahim. <laughs> Sean Kelly. <laughs> Colm Kinsella. <laughs> Harpal Lagar. <laughs> Hassan Mohammed. Naveed Shabir. <laughs> Lauren Murr. <laughs> Sydney Joy Orondo. <laughs> Miles Peak. <laughs> Hanisha Najran. Grace Williams. <laughs> Miles Wright. <laughs> Sipan Zappoli. <laughs> Bachelor of Science with Honours in Building Surveying, Lee Bauer. Nico Chalan. Samuel Cooper. Karen Delarvon. Kieran Faraday. Ben Grinnell. Hamza Hassan. <laughs> Barbara Isabor. <laughs> Ahmad Khan. <laughs> Abdul Salam. <laughs> Abdul Salam. 
Mampri Sodi. For the Bachelor of Science with Honours with Construction Management, Asadula Bara. <laughs> Reese Blakesley. <laughs> Natalie Cramp. <laughs> Sean Forbes. Mohammed Bilal Khan. <laughs> Rahim Khan. <laughs> Mitchell Laird. <laughs> Abdul Mir. <laughs> Ryan Butler Milborn. Johannes Santoso. Yurag uh, Singh. George Smith. Charlie Stevens. Dwayne Turpin. <laughs> Bachelor of Science with Honours in Property Development and Planning, Jack Bayliss. <laughs> Olivia Griffin. <laughs> Ahmad Jamil. Kelsey Millward. <laughs> Rosalind Whitehouse. <laughs> Mohammed Show Ahmed. <laughs> Bachelor of Science with Honours in Quantity Surveying, Mohammed Ahmed. Hassan Zafar. <laughs> James Archer. <laughs> Eleanor Benton. <laughs> George Brady. <laughs> Zachary Birchall. Clifton. Dan Conlon. Nathaniel Conan. Roy Davis. Brandon Edwards. <laughs> Kieran Gilligan. <laughs> Javid Haidari. <laughs> Scott Hammond. Harvey, <laughs> Benjamin Hibbs, <laughs> George Jarman, <laughs> Matthew J, <laughs> Katie Kay. Shahid Khan. Samuel 
Rachel Leck. Connor Macken. Amar Mo sorry, Amar Mahmood. Reese McGarry. Max Pearson. Asad Rafiq. Amino Roman. Benjamin Sargent. Andrew Smith. Jordan Wells. Liam Willits. Macaulay Williams. Josiah Yates. Jessly Ahmad Abdul Jilly. <laughs> Astja Ahmad. <laughs> Nipsey Nilamundine. <laughs> Mohammed Ashraf Mohammed Ekri. Mohammed Nazir Mohammed Imran. <laughs> Mohammed no Norzan Munzor. <laughs> Nipin Pala Valaja Lithoa. Uh, Nissan Widjid Thunga. <laughs> Bachelor of Science with Honours in Real Estate, Mohammed Ajab. <laughs> Max Andrews. Woo! <laughs> oh, Thomas Paul Barwell. Mahima Bagan. <laughs> Vikash Bidrol. <laughs> Miriam Collitz. <laughs> Amran Jagpal. Matthew Johnson. <laughs> Sophian, Sophian Christ. <laughs> Adele Rule Martin. Abraham Wahid. <laughs> the Higher National Certificate in Construction, Thomas Barlow. Charlotte Brooks. Dwayne Brown. Shona Gowdy. <laughs> da 
Daniel Jones. The Higher National Certificate in Construction again, Jacob Leto. <laughs> Joseph Thomas. <laughs> this completes the presentation of awards to graduates from the School of the Engineering and the Built Environment. This completes the presentation of graduates from the Faculty of Computing, Engineering and the Built Environment. I now invite Marta Maraca, who has graduated this afternoon with a Bachelor of Engineering with Honours, Mechanical Engineering, to address the congregation. Good morning and welcome to friends, family, staff and fellow graduates of 2022. It is a great honour to be asked to speak to you today, a special day for me and my family, just as I'm sure it is for so many of you here today at the culmination of our studies. I would like to begin by thanking our Pro Chancellor and other academic colleagues for giving up their time today to join us as we celebrate our academic achievements. I would like to share with you a little anecdote from my time coming to and studying at VCU which I hope I will be relatable to all of us in some way. Before I chose to pursue engineering, I always thought I would study something within the biomedical field. Therefore, on my A-levels, I only covered biology and chemistry. After moving to Birmingham and realizing that engineering is my true calling, I have checked uh, the BCU criteria and found that I only needed to complete one more A-level, and I have chosen mathematics. Having not covered mathematics or physics beyond the basic level in school, I had quite the challenge ahead of me as I sat the exams without following a college course. On results day, the worst thing has happened. I was two points short of meeting the grade BC had asked me for it in my conditional offer. I phoned the admissions uh, to find out if I should start from foundation year uh, in order to make up the score difference. And on the other end of the line was our associate dean. Um, he has recognized my tenacity and drive to succeed and allowed me to start from the first year regardless of my score jokingly asking me to promise not to disappoint. As I started the course, it was clear that his attitude is prevalent amongst all of the staff here. From academic guidance to personal support, I was constantly inspired to reach for the skies and discover new concepts beyond the scope of my course. Three years later, now being industry ready, graduating and off to pastures new, I will keep looking back at the many people who have made me the engineer and the person I am today I'm sure that, much like myself, many of you fellow graduates will always look uh, back and keep the same fondness for the time you have spent here. As we set out to the next stage of onto our lives, we are still individuals with our own distinct ambitions, but we are also united as the class of 2022, a permanent part of our university's history. Congratulations to you all. I now invite the Vice-Chancellor to close the ceremony. Come on, I think for one of your own, you could give her a slightly uh, louder round of applause than that. Than Martha. <laughs> could I also please ask you if you wouldn't mind giving a warm hand to the musicians who entertained us earlier? <laughs> Well, it simply remains for me to add my personal congratulations to all those of you who've received awards today. And I offer my very best wishes to you all for the future, whatever that holds. I know better than most by now not to stand in the way one moment longer of celebrations which I'm sure await with families and friends. So at this point, I'm going to declare the congregation closed and we'd be very grateful, please, if you would stand and remain in your places whilst the stage processions leave the hall. Thank you for your attendance. <laughs>